First tonight, remembering the children lost in that police chase tragedy. The neighborhood is gathering for vigil, and we're hearing from the mother of the children killed by drivers speeding away from police. 7 Action News reporter Aaron Baskerville live on Detroit's east side tonight with our top story. Aaron. Stephen and Carolyn, friends and family are just starting to gather here near the corner of Nottingham and Frankfurt. They've been walking up and down this block, a very emotional scene. Behind me over here, you can see where people have been stopping by. They've been leaving balloons, cards, stuffed animals, doing anything and everything they can just to support this family during this terrible time. As we all know by now, two kids were killed out here last night. Their names, three-year-old Micaiah Jackson and her brother, six-year-old Michael Angelo Jackson. This all started around 8 o'clock last night when there was a police chase involving two suspects in a car. They spotted him a distance away from this area on the east side near Nottingham and Frankfurt. A suspect had a gun. The two hopped in a car, late model Camaro, sped away going at least 80 miles per hour from police. At one point, police lost contact, lost sight. That car lost control, jumping the curb, slamming into those two young kids, then continuing on down the street, hitting four more victims, a three, five, seven-year-old, also a 23-year-old woman. Just about a half hour ago, I had the chance to talk to the mother of the brother and sister who were killed, and she had this message for the suspects. The people that was driving the car, I hope they pay for what they done and feel sorry for me and regret that they rolled up on this curb and hit five kids and took two away. And they should go to jail and pay for what they did. She told me she was actually inside the house when her two young kids were out here. They were on their scooters playing. Once again, you can see just the support overwhelming out here. All of the balloons, stuffed animals, also the cards that are stopping by. Some people are gathering at the corner right over there right now as this vigil, candlelight vigil, is scheduled to start around six o'clock around right now, maybe the next 15 minutes. Of course, we'll be out here watching and monitoring what the new developments will be. And uh, we'll send it back to you in the studio, Stephen and Carol. All right, Aaron, we'll talk to you again at 7 o'clock. Thank you for the report. Well, the three officers involved in the chase are a part of a special operations unit. They were on a routine patrol in the same cruiser when they made the decision to turn on their lights and sirens and pursue a speeding car through neighborhood streets. Now, it's a decision police admit must be evaluated through the lens of their own vehicle pursuit policy. 7 Action News reporter Curtis Jackson has a closer look at that. The ultimate responsibility for this tragedy belongs to the man behind the wheel. But according to the department's vehicle pursuit policy, the decision to chase or not chase is just as vital as shoot or don't shoot. We have not gotten to the point where I can tell you definitively that there was a violation of department policy. The department's policy was just revised a year ago this month. The guidelines for terminating a pursuit are clear. A pursuit shall be discontinued when there is a clear and present danger to the public. Officers must place the protection of human life over all other considerations. And the decision to terminate a pursuit may be the wisest course of action. Chief Craig says a supervisor did tell the officers to break off the chase as per department policy. We've gone down to communications to verify whether or not the super, supervisor's request was heard. We did not pick that up. Something else they haven't picked up, the gun. The main reason for the pursuit that led to this tragedy hasn't been found. And without it, the department's own policy hasn't been satisfied. The gun is what caused the initiation of the pursuit. The gun that no one can find. That's correct, that we have not found a gun. Craig says a witness at the scene saw one of the fleeing suspects get out of the car with a gun. But again, the weapon has not been found. The officers involved in the chase are on limited duty tonight. In downtown Detroit, Curtis Jackson, 7 Action News.